Well, kia ora everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of the Harness Half Hour. Thanks to Air Park Canterbury and HRNZ Marketing. As we did last year, we're taking this opportunity to chat with some of the race meetings. Over the holiday period, we'll chat to representatives from most of the clubs racing over Christmas and New Year's and get you all the latest information on what's happening at their meeting and what you can expect on course. We're going to start things off with the 21st of December, the Wairio meeting, and chatting here to Rowena McIntosh. Well, of course, starting off the festive season, Saturday 21st of December is when most people would have finished up work, getting ready for a nice Christmas with friends and family. And it's a perfect occasion, too, to head out and take in some great harness racing action with the Wairio uh, meeting, of course. And Rowena McIntosh is joining me from the Wairio Club. Rowena, how are things going in preparation for your Christmas meeting? Oh, we've um, just finalised a few more things today and now we just sort of got to hope that uh, the weather's going to play ball because she's touch and go this whole year at the moment, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. But the, the beautiful thing is, of course, leading into Christmas, there's still a few gatherings, still a few work gets get-togethers, so it's a good opportunity for people to go out and relax. Yeah, well, our meeting's a great one for the family, you know, pack a picnic lunch, come out and watch a few fast races and... Yeah, there's a bit of fun there for the kids as well. We've got Jeep rides for $2, and we've also got Santa calling in to have a lolly scramble as well. Gee, well done you, because I know he's a hard man to get hold of at this time of year. Oh, we've, we've got a special connection with our Santa, so, you know, he, <laughs> he, he never misses a worry meeting. That is good to hear. And, of course, uh, at your meeting you've got some great racing and also uh, potentially a two-year-old non-tote event which is scheduled, and they're always of interest. Yeah, well, hopefully there's a few two-year-olds bowling around at the moment, and I know there's a few Canterbury ones up going too, isn't there? Yeah. And so, no, hopefully we can get a two-year-old non-tote off for the, you know, first for the southern season. And um, we've also got a gold chip final for the Trotters. Mm-hmm. Um, and also associated with that, we give the winner the Jimmy Dillon Cup, which every year we alternate with the uh, Winton Club. Yep. And then also we've got the Otaotao Four Square Supermarket Wario Cup. Um, with, we've got prizes donated by Marge Drake. She's an awesome sponsor of ours. It, it also helps that her husband and, and father-in-law are on the committee as well. <laughs> so no, it'd be, it'd be a great day and just see what horses cut down and challenge that because it's the first heat of the country cups as well. Oh, of course, and that's always such a popular uh, competition throughout the summer, the Country Cup Series. Uh, Rowena, what would you say to anyone that's listening to this and thinking about heading along to your meeting, what would you say to encourage them to do so? Oh, just come out and just see what entertainment we've got on board. It's a great day out for your family, and this year we've also got the horses coming down the grass track, Mm -hmm. grass straight, because usually we have them going to a parade ring right through where all the vehicles come through, but can actually sit in your cars and watch the horses parade down to the birdcage and before they head out into the track. Perfect. Oh, Rowena, thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy getting your own garden ready, but I know the course will be ready for a beautiful day on the 21st of December. Merry Christmas yeah, no, to you. That's cool. And also, just one last thing, we've um, one of our sponsors, uh, Jan Hamilton from Hamill Saddlery, she's on course with her float load of goodies for all trainers and drivers, and then also she's um, donated a beautiful voucher for a random horse that we'll just pick out of our race book that lines up on the day. Oh, beautiful. Well done to the team. That's awesome to have that incentive uh, on course for the Wairia meeting Saturday, Saturday 21st of December. Uh, Rowena, thank you so much, and once again, Merry Christmas to you and the team. No, thank you, Jess, for everything that you do for us as well down here in the Southland. On the Sunday 22nd of December, Rangiora will have their Christmas at the races meeting on the grass track surface, always a popular day in North Canterbury, and we caught up with club president Greg Wright. Well, Christmas in North Canterbury always has a popular race day. Of course, the 22nd of December, we'll see the Rangiora Harness Racing Club have their Christmas at the races event. And joining me is president Greg Wright. Uh, Greg, you and the team must be flat out getting ready for this big event. Good afternoon, Jess, and Merry Christmas. Yes, Dad, it's a very busy time of the year um, with with a meeting close to Christmas and then another one in the early part of the new year. The, um, the calls on the committee are, are pretty heavy, but everybody's bending their backs to the to the job, and we're going very well, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's always a decent crowd at the Christmas meeting in particular. Do you know how the bookings are going with the Christmas at the races hospitality options? Yeah, the, the bookings uh, for the self-catering have gone very, very well. Mm-hmm. The, the catered bookings aren't 
quite as strong as they were last year because we are much later in that run up to Christmas. Oh, yes. And a lot of firms have actually wound up on the Friday mm. and therefore they were looking to have their Christmas celebrations before they actually closed their doors. So well, as we are very, very uh, heavily booked for the um, sites each side of the um, birdcage on the running rail. Uh, and we'll, we'll have a full schedule of people on the Amberley Hill, mm. but we're a little bit short on what we were last year. That's, a, that's just the timing of the meeting. Oh, yes, naturally, of course. And it's a good opportunity if people are listening and they want to get in last minute, then make sure you check out the website for that too. And, of course, uh, being on the grass track, the action is right there in front of them too. Absolutely, right right in front of their nose. Yeah. Okay, in terms of on-course entertainment, if people are looking at coming along to that meeting, uh, Greg, obviously it's a perfect opportunity for the family to come and bring the picnic rug and enjoy grass track racing at its best. Absolutely, and we've got a, a, a plethora of uh, entertainments for the children. There's face painting, bouncy castles, a band, the the pirate puppeteers. Mm. I always enjoy standing and watching when I get a chance. <laughs> uh, we've also got uh, for the growing ups um, the uh, again the band, and we have uh, draws for the dual sulky rides. We'll have um, four heats of four, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, then finishing the day off, we've done a deal with the North Pole. And Father Christmas is coming, but he's not bringing his reindeer. He's going to be in a gig drawn by Monkey King. Really? Which we thought was a pretty special deal, really. Oh, yeah. Well, that in itself is a great incentive for people to come along and see Monkey King. Of course, he's still looking in great condition. So well done to the team for managing to hook Santa up with such a great horse. Well, exactly. He said he wouldn't do it for anybody um, that wasn't really special. So we we thought Monkey King was the answer. (laughs) Oh, that's fantastic. And, of course, as you mentioned, Greg, there's no rest for your team because Friday, 3rd of January, you've got uh, the Twilight Meeting on the all-weather track. Correct. um, We've swapped over to the all-weather just to give the the maintenance staff a chance to get the grass ready for Amberley on Waitangi Day uh, with the, the gallops training on the grass. Mm-hmm. It's, it gets a fair amount of use at Rangiora. So we've gone on to the all-weather. Uh, it also is a, uh, a change from the grass track racing that's around. Uh, three o'clock kick-off, and everybody is uh, very welcome to bring gas barbecues and picnics and come out and make a, a family day of it. The 22nd of December meeting being a Christmas at the races, there is a gate charge of $10.00. Uh, under 18s are free, but on the 3rd of January, that is a, a free entry, free race book as per normal, and we're delighted to see people there. Perfect. Of course, a good opportunity after New Year to wind down with uh, a nice twilight meeting there in North Canterbury at Rangiora. And Greg, understand you've got a couple of uh, items too in terms of your club news lately. Correct. We've uh, moved to appoint a new club administrator, uh, and Miranda Donnell has taken over that role from... Um, started just after Cup Week and Wendy Muldrew is acting as our race day secretary so we, we've we got uh, those changes and we've also got two new women committee members uh, Melissa Higgins and Denise Carlson have joined our committee and that brings a, a little bit better gender balance and also some younger uh, ideas and attitudes onto the committee which is always important as we look to try and build our social media presence and appeal to younger patrons. Oh, exactly. And I've got to commend your team on your social media. Of course, whenever there's a race meeting, uh, the information is always there throughout the day. If people can't make it on course, it's great to see. So well done to the club. Uh, Welcome on board to those new members. And uh, Greg, thank you so much for your time. Merry Christmas to you and the crew and can't wait for your race meetings over the holidays. Thank you very much indeed, Jess. You have a, a, a really good time as it gets busier for you. Hi, Razor here from Canterbury Rugby. When you need airport parking, choose a team that's on the ball. Meet at Airpark Canterbury and get their free Mercedes shuttle to drop you right off at the terminal. Airpark Canterbury have the cheapest 24-7 airport parking and you'll never get left on the sidelines. Give Airpark Canterbury a try. Airparkcanterbury.co.nz There's always a park for me At Airpark Canterbury
Christmas Eve, of course, 24th of December, Ash Burton, and uh, it is a chance for people to unwind. And we caught up with Race Day Secretary Richard Bromley. And of course, Christmas Eve, the Ash Burton meeting will be held 24th of December with some feature race races on the card as well. And joining me from the club is uh, Race Day Secretary Richard Bromley. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I guess for most people, they can unwind on Christmas Eve, but not for you and the team. Absolutely there, Jesse. Good afternoon to you. Yeah, we have a 10-race card there on Christmas Eve at Ashburton. So as you probably know, a lot of people will be hurrying and scurrying to get their last-minute Christmas gifts done. But if you've got time on your hand, pop out to Ashburton, a 10-race card. Probably about a 12.45 start, all races and all great to cater for. So a good way to unwind just prior to Christmas. Exactly. And you kind of want something to distract the family. The kids will be going crazy with Christmas the next day. And, you know, it's a perfect setting just to take along a picnic rug and, and enjoy the festivities and some good racing action too, which is a bonus. Absolutely. You've got the running of the Ashburton Cup, which is a rating 63 and faster, 20k up for grabs. So it's some good racing on the track. And as you say, a good time to unwind that grass here in front of the public stand. As they bring the picnic basket and just enjoy it. A good day's afternoon out there at Ashburton. Yeah, I see there's a Phillies and Mares Mile as well, which will be pretty popular with breeders. Exactly. There's been quite a few Phillies and Mares races in the last sort of five or six weeks, as you know, have been well populated as well. So that Phillies and Mares will take uh, a bulk of the racing, as you say. So, but uh, apart from that, all grades cater for from the maidens to the square gators to the, to the intermediate grade horse as well. So it should be a good card for all horses to cater for. OK. And f- Richard, for you, Christmas Day, what does that look like? Working horses still? Oh, so was, uh, me and John will just work the horse in the morning, get them fed, and then pop round to mum and dad's with the family and just sort of enjoy some good old Christmas tucker. Oh, good on you. Hey, Richard, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope Christmas Eve and that meeting goes well, and uh, all the best to you and the family for the new year. And the same best to you, Jess. Thanks for your time. The start of the uh, West Coast Circuit of the South Island, of course, on the 26th of December, Boxing Day, West Sport. This is a very, very popular circuit, and we had a chat to Troy Scanlon. Well, as part of the Harness Half Hour Holiday Edition, of course, it wouldn't be a holiday edition without chatting to the team at the Westport Trotting Club. And joining me is Troy Scanlon. Uh, Troy, nice to have you on the show. And as we chat, the weather hasn't been so flash, but Westport never fails to, de- to deliver, no matter what the weather. Surely you're in for a change. Surely, Jess. Um, you know, we've had a bit of a a rough run, uh, probably a, a wetter spring, and uh, look, it hasn't been the, the greatest start, uh, I suppose, to the summer, but we're looking forward to definitely a change of weather, and I think it's uh, just around the corner, it's just started to improve, so um, we actually had our track inspection the other day, and uh, we were told that the track was in fantastic order, so even uh, through that weather, the, the team have been doing an amazing job uh, keeping that up to scratch, so um, have to pass on our congrats to the, the track management team there, they've done a super job. Oh, exactly, and it's not an easy task, is it, when you've got the likes of weather and in recent years you guys have even had to contend with the sea of all things. Yeah, yeah, we've, um, we've certainly had our, our ups and downs. Um, every year ago we uh, certainly had a, a bit of a shock when the sea come to meet uh, Patterson Park, mm. um, but unbelievably four weeks after that we still had it held our March meeting, so I suppose that shows you... Um, the uh, depth and the, um, the energy that committee would go to to, to make sure that we still um, get everything ready and right for the people coming across the Alps. Yeah, definitely. OK, so talking about the race meeting, for those who are living under a rock, of course, you race on Boxing Day and then two days later and then the uh, meet heads to Reefton. Uh, are the team excited about Boxing Day and what are you expecting for the crowd this year? Oh, we're always excited, Jess. I think um, the club try and do a really good job of keeping uh, everyone entertained, whether it be the, the children or the, the adults that are coming on course. Um, obviously uh, involved with Inter Island uh, Summer Festival of Racing again uh, on both days. So, you know, that, that uh, gives the kids the free entertainment and we have the live music and the marquees and, and all that stuff sort of, sort of bubbling behind the background. Um, We've uh, run again with the uh, Fast Track Insurance $5,000 draw uh, for the horses that finished second or further back in the big race on the Thursday, the Pulse Energy Westport Cup, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a new innovation we've put in place. It's uh, worth $5,000, so all the horses that finish from second back to last get put in a bucket, one gets drawn out and wins $5,000. So yeah. so that's, that's a, really, um, it's a really good innovation, and, and last year... Um, for those that were on track, uh, it was pretty obvious who had won it. David Pearce, uh, for those that know Dave, 
uh, hungry as he's known. Um, his horse was drawn out of the bucket, and I think he thought all his Christmas had come at once. So, uh, <laughs> so um, there was plenty of beers being shouted over the uh, over the days uh, leading into Reefs, and um, yeah, he was a happy man. So, uh, so you know, lots of lots of entertainment on track, and and hopefully the sun shines like it has done for um, God. I can't remember the last week day we had touch wood. So, mm. um, so you'd be nice to get another couple of fine days. Uh, First, uh, on the first day, we have the Celtics Westport Repco fashions of the field as well. So Celtics Westport and Repco coming on board there. There's over three thousand dollars worth of prizes in the fashions of the field competition for those that are on track and want to dress up a bit. Um, it's certainly worth uh, throwing your hat in the ring there. Oh, exactly. And of course, you have your regulars that religiously come back. It'll be great to have Pete and Margot back this year. And you guys also make a bit of a celebration and put things on on that middle day for people. We do, yeah, that's right, and um, yeah, obviously uh, Pete Marga uh, certainly had the trials and tribulations and, and had a, a share in a, a horse that was involved in the accident, so um, they've done amazingly well to bounce back with the you know the support of the industry um, to bounce back as well as they have, um, so yeah, we'll be welcoming them back, I'm sure, and yeah, a lot of the usuals will be back, I'm sure, Jess, they, they come each year, and I think, um, you know, we try really hard to to put on a good show and, and be hospitable. That's one of the things the club really works hard on. So, um, yeah, mm. looking forward to hopefully a good two days in Westport and, um, and a day in Reefton, of course, on the 30th of December. Yeah, and if anyone's listening, Troy, and uh, they haven't been to the coast before and they're interested, can they give the club a call and find out about horse and human accommodations around that time? Yeah, so probably the best uh, the best point of contact is probably our Secretary, Colin Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Um uh, you can contact him. He's uh, at BWC Racing, I think it is, at extra.co.nz. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, we've also got the Facebook page as well. That's a really easy way just to get in touch with the club. We've got three or four administrators checking that, um, and we try and get back to people as soon as we can. So that's just under the Westport Trotting Club on Facebook. You can find that and uh, just uh, add yourself, and we'll, we'll accept the friendship, and uh, then you can be in contact constantly there. That's a really easy way to keep in touch. So... Um, yeah, we'll try and make sure that we can uh, answer any questions or point people in the right direction to get the answers. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Troy. I'm, I'm sure the weather gods are going to play their part and uh, you and the team keep up the phenomenal work. I know there's a lot of hard yards that go into it and uh, we'll certainly be tuning in and enjoying the festivities from Westport this year. Thank you very much. Is she not making it across this year? Oh, no. Uh, Santa's uh, been a little little bit busy, so <laughs> I'll be staying at home and, and watching the action from there, but I always enjoy a flutter over at the coast. Very good. Good to hear. Adia Park, Canterbury. They've got no fancy gimmicks. Just the best deal on airport car parking every day. In fact, bring Airpark any comparative offer and they'll match or beat it. Forget the gimmicks, get the best price guaranteed. Call 0800 Airpark for the cheapest 24-7 airport parking in Christchurch. There's always a park for me at Airpark Canterbury. On the 27th of December, Gore will take place and we caught up with Ross Cleland of the Gore Harness Racing Club. Well, of course, on the 27th of December, Gore will take centre stage. It is their cup meeting and joining me from the club is Ross Cleland, president of the Gore Harness Racing Club. Ross, thank you so much for your time and I'd imagine it's all hands on deck getting ready for your big event over the holidays. Yeah, it is, Jess. And, and, um, yeah, it is our big meeting and we're really looking forward to it. Um, some exciting racing coming up. Do you find historically, Ross, you get really good support from the local community with this meeting? We do, yeah. It's it's a day out for the community. They they support us wholeheartedly and as um, long as we get a good day and, um, yeah, there's people galore, so hopefully <laughs> that can continue. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's perfect timing too because you don't have the crowd with the pre-Christmas stress. They're more or less looking for something to do to relax and unwind and they're in a good frame of mind at that time. Yeah, yeah they're just looking for a nice um, relaxing day really after the, the rush of Christmas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So do you encourage people to bring along a picnic? Can they you know, bring in their own food, find somewhere to, to relax for the afternoon, Ross? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, historically everybody comes along that some of them put tents up and, and sit under the trees and what have you down the, the home straight and um, 
yeah, they have a ball. So um, hopefully, as long as the weather plays the game, that will continue. Oh, awesome. OK, and of course, looking at the racing side of things, Ross, as mentioned, you've got the Gore Cup, but you've got a very nice race there, thanks to Cadrona Distillery supporting the three-year-old stakes. Yeah, and just like to thank Ash and the team up there. They've they come on board last year, and um, it's something that the committee wanted to get going again. A, a three-year-old race at this time of year, and um, we're we're pushing for support for it. So hopefully the Canterbury trainers all all back us because we've got about four or five Southlanders that are going. Nathan Williamson's Pembroke Playboy, and um, a few others that are going to support it, so hopefully we can get it off the ground. Beautiful. And uh, for those who are listening to this, Ross, and maybe they haven't bought horses down there before or they've, they've heard that and they're considering doing so, are you guys happy to you know, chat to them around accommodation and, and transport and all those types of things? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll find somewhere for them to stay. <laughs> it won't be a problem. <laughs> a couple of spare rooms at my place. So, um, Beautiful. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll look after them. Awesome. Well, Ross, thank you so much for your time. As I say, I know it's a busy time for you and the committee getting ready for this big event, uh, 27th of December. We've got fingers crossed that the weather gods are kind to you and uh, Merry Christmas to you and the committee there. Yeah, same to you, Jess, and, and thanks for the job that you've done over the year. It's been fantastic. Um, yeah, you're an asset to harness racing. Something a bit different on the 28th of December, we see an equalisator meeting held at Hawea. It's the Hawea Picnic Racing Club, and uh, many people may not know that this even exists, so we took an opportunity to chat with Paul Cunningham. Well, it may not be an official race meeting, but it's certainly well and truly a highlight on the calendar for many who are near Hawea. The Hawea Picnic Racing Club will have their Equalisator race meeting on Saturday the 28th of December. Uh, Joining me is Paul Cunningham. Paul, thank you for your time. And firstly, can you explain to us a bit of the history around this Equalisator meeting? Yeah, hi there. Um, Well, we've been going since the Second World War. Um, and just kept going by a bunch of uh, volunteers that uh, do a great job and uh, yeah it's just got it steeped in history yeah it and, uh, sure, it is. sure is um, as you say it's been going since the second world war do you know why they started it or was it just you know a bit of a way to bring up morale uh, before my time but uh, I don't know the full history <laughs> but uh, I, I dare say you know just a, a, it used to run two meetings a year um, and you know just think it's just a bit of it day's entertainment yeah yeah of course and it's very unique Paul given that it's um, not held on a racetrack as such can you explain a bit about the venue uh, well it is a racetrack but not not an official one yeah but um, yeah it's, it's just a paddock and uh, in the middle of Hawea um, yeah <laughs> not much else I can say council owned and they look after it for us and, yeah um, yeah, we just have a great old time on the day. Yeah, so just alluding to that, though, it takes a bit of work to get it ready, or is it literally just getting the mower out? Oh, no, oh, well, no, no, goodness. Uh, <laughs> our committee does a fantastic, fantastic job. They worked very hard for about a month, uh, this month of December, to get it ready. Um, we do make hay out of the middle of the track. It's one of our income streams. Yeah. And local farmer buys that and does a great job with that. Um so it's just a real community effort just to keep the whole thing going. Yeah, it sounds great. And I've heard a lot of people talk about it, Paul, and uh, the community shows out, uh, shows up. There's plenty of entertainment there for families. Absolutely. The kids, we have the, the spoon race, the egg race, and in between the horse races, and uh, all done on the track. It's just... A, <laughs> and uh, well, the local radio station get in, get in behind us and, uh, and promote the day, and they are on course running these kid races too. So... Yeah. Um, you can see we get a lot of support. Yeah. So the first event kicks off at 10 a.m. Um, do people show up before that, Paul? Are they all talking about uh, it well before that? That's, sorry, the 10 o'clock start is for the Junior Pony Club. Okay. Uh-huh. And the, the first race is at 12 o'clock. If you're there at uh, half 11, you'll get the prime seat. Perfect. And uh, it does fill up, so get there early. Yep, perfect. Okay, so that's the Hawea Picnic Racing Club Equalisator Race Meeting uh, held at the Hawea Flat Domain on Saturday 28th of December. And Paul, by that stage, no doubt a lot of families are looking for something to do once Christmas has gone by. Ideally, we like to have a little bit of wind on our lake. It gets them all, they get sick of boating and they get, they come down to our race day. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Oh, well, well done to you and the committee. I know it, it is a labour of love and a lot of work does go into it. So all the best for the meeting there on the 28th of December. Brilliant, thanks for your support.
On the 29th of December, the crowds will descend upon Motu Carrara, of course, just 20 minutes from Christchurch City, Banks Peninsula Trotting Club. Huge day there, and we caught up with Glenn Hames from the club. Well, it's one of the biggest race meetings on the calendar in the Canterbury region around Christmas, of course, on the 29th of December, the Banks Peninsula Trotting Club will hold their Mott Christmas Cup meeting. And joining me from the club is Glenn Hames. Uh, Glenn, thank you for your time. And obviously things will be well and truly swinging into action for that big meeting. Yes, it's been really busy. We've um, already sold uh, 21 gazebo sites along the front straight. Um, a couple of sites have gone on the Mott Hill, which is for marquees. So... If you're interested in getting involved in those, you need to get online and, um, and book the, your, your um, packages as quickly as you can. Yeah, and historically, Glenn, we've seen this racetrack jam-packed full of people, even right up around the 600-metre point at times. Yeah, no, they go right around the right around the top of the straight. We have people that sort of uh, get their camper vans in there the night before. It's, it's really exciting for us. Um, we, we love having the big crowds there, and it's really a family-oriented day. We've got lots of things for the kids, free stuff. There's bouncy castles, there's pony rides, um, they even have a kiddies tote out there, and the kiddies carts are going to be along there, so no, it's going to be a big day for us. And of course, if people are visiting the Canterbury region and haven't been before, it looks like it's a world away, but it's actually not that far from the city centre itself. No, it's about 15 minutes um, from the, the Horsel area, um, and it's a, it's a pretty, it's an easy drive out there. Um, we have a lot of people that actually come from the Banks Peninsula region because a lot of people holidaying out there, and uh, mm. they like to come into town and um, just break up their holiday a little bit with the day of the races. Yeah, and of course, um, is, is there a gate fee on the day there, Glenn? Yes, there is. It's ten dollars entry, but that's for um, people eighteen years and over. Yeah, perfect. And and it still allows people to come in, bring the picnic rug, set up a few chairs down the straight, and just take time out to spend it with fa- friends and family. Yeah, that's what they that's what they love doing, and that, that, that's what creates the whole atmosphere for us. As you say, as you said earlier, um, there's people right up the top end of the straight. Um, they see the horses disappear down towards the winning line, and uh, they have a great family day out. So let's yeah. bring on a nice sunny day for us and um, hopefully it'll be a success for everybody. Yeah, I know there's a lot of work too that goes into the day because you know you just don't expect eight or 9,000 people to show up without the committee having to do a lot of hard work. Yeah, no, they, we, we actually get along there, um, well we have a work be the day before to get everything planned and um, then we put on a breakfast for the guys in the morning and then everyone's ready to go with a, with a full stomach and a bit of coffee in them and uh, <laughs> we get everything prepared for the day and uh, we're ready to go. Perfect. And of course, um, finally, if people are wanting to race their horse at that meeting, it's the big green grass track. It's perfect at that time of year for competitive racing. Well, we've, we've been really highly praised this year. We have a track inspection every year. Um, John Den comes out and does that, and uh, he said it's the best it's looked uh, for 10 years. So a big up to um, Scott Edmonds, our caretaker. He's really made it, made it look great. And the whole area, you know, when, when the grass gets mown, it's, um, it's come to all the smell of grass for the, for the summer and spring. It always makes everyone feel good, um, and it's looking great back. Perfect. Uh, Glenn, I know you're a busy man. Thank you so much for your time, and very much looking forward to the big meet there on December 29th. Yeah, thanks, Jess. No, so are we. We're looking forward to it. So come on out and enjoy yourself. On the 30th of December, we will see the culmination of the West Coast Circuit with Reefton holding their annual race day. We caught up with Greg Top. Well, of course, following the two days at Westport, we look forward to the big meeting at Reefton. And joining me from the Reefton Club is uh, Greg Top. Greg, thank you very much for your time. And are you and the committee looking forward to the big day? Yeah, certainly are, Jess. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Eh? It's um, uh, coming around rather quickly again. I think, as you know, as you get older, the years go quicker. But, yeah, no, <laughs> certainly looking forward to the day. Yeah, but the good news is as the year goes quicker, it means that this circuit comes round again because there are people that every year without fail go to these race meetings, aren't there? Oh, for sure. People love the grass environment. Like We all love Cup Week. Um, but then you get to these country meetings, whether it be Westport, Reefton, Methven, Geraldine, any of these places, it's just really nice to have that uh, intermingling. Mm. And uh, yeah, people do come over every year for it, which is really nice, eh? Yeah, oh, it sure is. And of course, there's a lot of history behind the Reefton track itself and the club. And what kind of work is involved, Greg, as you build into a race circuit like this? Because I'd imagine most of the committee would be volunteers. Yeah, certainly are. Everyone's a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of work. We've done a lot of work over the last few years 
the club's now what, 121 years old. Wow. But we've done a lot of work retrieving and putting back to the, um, trying to keep in the historic nature of the town mm. and try restoring buildings. And we've got most of them back to where they were, which is really nice. Cool. And we have functions down there now. Um, and people go, well, it's stunning. Yeah. And so we're just trying to keep in, in, in tune with the town, so to speak. And as the town is lifting itself, um, so is the club. Yeah. And so it's just great for people coming in. Whether they come to the races or they come and enjoy the town, mm. um, enjoy the circuit even. Yeah. Uh, it's just really nice, Jess. Oh yeah, and some of the most picturesque scenery in the country, of course, around that Christmas circuit. And uh, for anyone who's wanting to attend on the day, Greg, is there on-course entertainment? Is it a family atmosphere? What kind of things happen at the track? Yeah, it certainly is. We've been fortunate for the last few years to be part of the Summer Festival of Racing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is a pretty full-on day. Uh, For the children's entertainment, it's all free. Mm. Um, It's been amazing. Um, And we have... Uh, many running races, heaps of stuff, but we don't run a fashions in the field. We run a glamour in the gold field ah. because of Reefton's nature, and yep. that has gone down really well over the last few years as well. So if you want to get done up for the day, um, just like Cup Day, come along to Reefton and enjoy. Glamour in the gold fields. I absolutely love it. And I actually, I think I've seen a little bit on social media about that. It is very competitive, isn't it? <laughs> it is. For a little town, and you know, we've had people that have um, come and competed in Reefton, that have competed in Ellerslie, wow. uh, Rickerton Park, Addington, and also Melbourne Cup Day, believe oh, it or really? not, and they're coming back again. Good stuff, that is fantastic, from Melbourne to Reefton, that is outstanding. <laughs> uh, of course, the yeah, meeting, for sure. yeah, the meeting is held on Monday the 30th of December. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for your time, I know there's a lot of work involved in getting these race meetings off the ground so I take my hat off to you and the team and wish you all the very best of luck this year Uh, Thanks Jess, yeah, hopefully we'll see a few people along On the 31st of December, New Year's Eve. It's a great opportunity for those in Southland to head along to the Winton meeting Uh, We caught up earlier with Alistair Kyle well, of course, New Year's Eve in the Deep South, we have Winton taking centre stage with some great racing action on course. And joining me from the club is Alistair Kyle. Uh, Alistair, thank you so much for your time, and no doubt you and the team at Winton are looking forward to another busy holiday season. Certainly is, yes, all right. Yeah, like everybody looks forward to the, to the Christmas racing, uh, even from the trainers and drivers, the committees, everybody, and even public-wise. Uh, yeah, and generally in the South, yeah, the public do support us over Christmas. Yeah, and of course... It, it is when people do get out and about, and it's when they have time to go along. Yeah. So no, we're, we're hoping for a New Year's Eve. Um, we weren't too sure when we were given that date. I think it was three years ago they gave it to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, no, it appears to be working for us. Um, certainly from Winton's point of view, we're quite a small town. And uh, for the people who tend to have, uh, stay in Winton, it seems to be actually one of the only options they've got. So it has actually surprised us the last two years. Yeah, and I guess... So no, we look forward to it. Yeah, people that aren't looking to have a raucous night out or maybe just a nice family atmosphere, it's the perfect setting. That's what it appears to have been, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. as I say, the last two years we weren't just too sure how it would go, but as I say, with, with Winton, uh, generally a lot of people do head central, but for the people who do stay in and around the south, there's not a lot on for them on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. So no, it, it has surprised us, that meeting, the last couple of years, so, and we have looked at it as a family day, yeah. They, uh, and yeah, there has been some quite quite good picnic settings around in the last couple of years. So no, we just hope the weather holds up for us, yeah. Yeah, and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, and of course, racing wise, Alistair, are uh, nice to see the fillies being catered for at your meeting on New Year's Eve. Exactly right, as, as we said. Yeah, you've got to look after the fillies and the mares, and we've always tried to promote that. The um, the breeders do keep on our ears. There's no doubt about that the, uh, <laughs> to promote it. But at the same time, from everybody across the board, at the end of the day, if, if we don't keep the fillies and mares and look after them. They, uh, we don't have anything left for further down the line. Yeah. They, uh, and like all the years we've been at it, even myself, like I don't do a lot of breeding, I usually try and get a couple of folds a year, but any nice mares that we have, we do try to hang on to them. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, of course, there's a three-year-old filly smile, which is a new incentive, as you say, you've been listening to the breeders, so let's hope that it's well patronised, that race. Yeah, that's what we hope at the end of the day. If, if we do do try these things and we put them on, that's the other side of it. We do want them to patronise it. The, uh, 
because like a lot of things today, it is not easy chasing that dollar today. Yeah. They, uh, so we've got to try and yep, have a go at doing it. Yeah. Oh, well, good on you, Alistair. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you and the club all the very best of luck for that New Year's Eve meeting. I'm sure the weather will be perfect and you'll have some superb fields there again. No, we hope so too, Jess. No, and good to hear from you. No, and thanks for that. On the 2nd of January at Tauhira Nikau, a unique opportunity for dual code harness racing action, the Wired Upper Harness Racing Club will have four races and we caught up with Race Southie. Well, of course, on the 2nd of January, Tauhira Nikau hosts a dual code meeting alongside the Wired Upper Harness Racing Club. And joining me is President Ray Southey. Uh, Ray, thank you very much for your time and no doubt you and the committee are very much looking forward to another meeting. Yes, it's always been a big day. We lost it a couple of years ago, but it's been reinstated the last two years, so it's good. Yeah. And of course, a Tauhira Nikau, traditionally being on that date as well, it just gets such a massive crowd, doesn't it? Yes, you're looking at about 7,000 people normally, yeah. And they've always been blessed, so hopefully I can, I'm not putting um, the Jonah on up. It's always been a fine day. I don't think I've ever had rain, not in recent years anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's a good opportunity for people in that area to see some harness racing action as well. Yes, it's the only way to the bottom of North Island. I can't really have one of the tacky mm-hmm. on the grass, but that's the only two days at the bottom of the North Island, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Ray, if anyone's thinking about heading along to the race meeting with their family or friends, maybe they're heading to that region over Christmas, uh, what can they expect on course in terms of a family outing or entertainment? There's always a lot of children's entertainment. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what Taranaki I've got this year, but it's always been well provided for for families, and there's a huge amount of families that walk in there. I've always been on the gate there, and the people that come in with their children is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess they probably start showing up pretty early to try and get the best positions. Well, yes, yeah, a lot of trees there, and they all try and get their spot, I suppose, from year to year. <laughs> I, I see our first race is five past eleven that day, so I'll probably start coming in from nine o'clock onwards, I would think. Perfect. Well, you might want to make sure you're there nice and early. And of course, uh, Ray, if people are considering racing their horses there, you'd certainly encourage them to bring them down there. Yes, we welcome and we try and look after the fraternity that come there. Mm-hmm. We have four races non-stop from five past 11 and the galloping starts after that. Wonderful. Oh, well, Ray, I know you and the team will be very busy. I guess it, it must be a real team effort between you and the Thoroughbred uh, Code and Club there working together for the day. There's great cooperation from the Thoroughbred Code. Mm-hmm. They're welcoming us back and um, it's been very good. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Ray, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure as always to chat to you and I'm wishing the weather gods show kindness to you and the club again for the 2nd of January there at Tauhira Nikau. Thank you, Jess. I'm sure they will. 2nd of January, Central Otago Omakau Racecourse. It is the big meet for the year for the club. Of course, uh, Graham Cinnamon doing a lot of work there with the committee and we caught up with Graham earlier on to find out exactly what they're offering patrons, owners and horsemen this year. We head down to Central Otago now and one of the highlights on the calendar naturally is the Omakau meeting on the 2nd of January. Joining me is Graham Cinnamon for the club. Uh, Graham, thank you so much for your time and no doubt things are in full swing now getting ready for your big meeting. They certainly are. Um, I quite enjoyed the TV clip that the Kaikoura Club had on uh, Seven Sharp recently and the president there was describing it as two days of hell and 363 days of getting ready for it and that's, <laughs> I can I can so relate to that. <laughs> exactly and of course um, your attendance record is phenomenal. Was it about 8,000 people come to the course? Um, our best day ha- we have achieved over 8,000 but at the moment it seems to be floating around that sort of um, high six to 7,000 people mm. which is In this day and age, uh, we're very privileged to have a crowd that size, yes. Oh, exactly. It's a phenomenal effort. And, of course, the logistics around planning it, we see it with Cup Day, um, of course, the holiday season. There's a whole heap of things that people wouldn't even realise that you have to negotiate and work out with your team. Oh, the logistics of putting a race meeting in probably one of the most extreme climates in New Zealand, um, 
the fact that you only run waste one a year, you don't maintain the venue quite to a standard where you're racing every week, so you've got to put a lot more effort in coming into it. Mm. Um, I guess on the other hand, it gives us advantages that we can put all our eggs into one basket, and like our advertising package is only focused at one meeting, not a lot. Our entertainment package is focused at one, not a lot. But equally, you need a really good day because it's all or nothing, and if you get a wet day, it's uh, a fixture, and if you get a great day, it's spectacular. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, exactly what it is, just the one day. But it's a superb race meeting. It's one of my personal favourites in some of the most stunning scenery in the country. Uh, Graham, what's happening this year for those that are attending on course? Look, uh, we try and make it an experience that you don't need to like horses to enjoy a day at the races. And this year, we're really trying hard to get people to be on course, buy on course, and bet on course because Mm -hmm. and in return for that that we're going to give them a real taste of country hospitality and we treat everybody from the horse people to the public equally we think so the kind of things that we've got going this year are a fantastic ladies fashion competition with over a thousand dollars in prizes as per usual and it's it's very well um entered competition um Mobile barrier rides have always been very popular. I've never seen a person get off there that doesn't look like they're a kid that's just been told by Santa that they're going to get their best Christmas present. Like They are just (laughs) one of the best things you could do. Um, This year, Johnny Turner from the ODT is going to run our punters club and we're going to get him to do some on-course tips just to try and help out the fact that we've got a lot of people that don't know much about horses on course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Into the prize pool this year... You just have to be on course. You really do. Like we've got two Gibson Valley tickets to give out to the sold out concert in January. So there's Billy Idol, George Thorogood, Anastasia, Credence Clearwater Revival and Smash Mouth are going to be the, some of the um, acts at that. So we've got two tickets to that. We've got three Highlanders seasons passes to give away to various competitions throughout the day. There's a Ford motor vehicle competition and we're looking at extending that to Mazda but details are still being worked on there but Mm -hmm. a new one this year is a a local fellow has got access to an aeroplane so we're going to have a prize for a local scenic flight for up to an air Um, so yeah really cool prizes but one of the ones that we're really keen on is to promote ownership and you were part of that last year and I'm hoping Kirk and Michelle Larson are going to have a horse that we can use for one of those competitions but already we've got Brenda and Nigel Armstrong have committed two shares and the Witches Syndicate which were really part of a popular competition last year so two ladies are going to win an all expenses share in the syndicate uh, just by entering a competition on Facebook and being on course Oh, that is fantastic. And, of course, we've seen the success that um, Nigel's had with the likes of Spellbound finishing second in a harness jewels. And, you know, it doesn't matter how big of a share these people have. It's having the experience of knowing that they own that horse and going through that emotional roller coaster is, is the big plus. There's quite a group of Central Target girls that either didn't win this year's that have decided to buy them. And mm. I've been to a couple of their parties, like, <laughs> on Jules Day down here. <laughs> And I've never seen such a poorly behaved bunch of people, I thought. But, but it was just, look, honestly, seriously, it was fantastic to see people yelling at a television and just getting excited about it. Like, you know, I, I know that feeling occasionally, but these people were suddenly, they just had this moment and you thought, that's what we need to have more people mm. experiencing. And so it's just, you know, we can't get enough of it. But yep. Look, um. Entertainment extends to the kids, like uh, pony rides, jeeps, aqua bubbles, where they get to run around in giant plastic balls, um, face painting, obstacle courses, bouncy castles, scavenger hunts, kids' totes, and probably the biggest lolly scramble that I've ever seen. We usually have to go and get some international cricket players to throw the ball, uh, the lollies out to the back of the crowd to make sure they get there. So, <laughs> Yeah, you have to see it to believe the crowd. But uh, it, there might be a lot of people there, Graham, but it doesn't feel that way, does it? Because it's so spread out. You've got those beautiful trees that people can camp under. There's a heap of room there. We're very lucky that our forefathers did 
decide to plant a lot of trees at Omakau, so it's probably one of the best sheltered, shaded courses, mm. and particularly at that time of year, that's critical. So you get a lot of people coming into the different car parks, and they'll picnic and bring, uh, set themselves up at their cars for the day, and you know, shade is critical to that, there's no doubt about that. Um, but that said, we do provide everything, f- you know, the, the mod cons as best we can, from espresso coffee to we've got our local bar, but we've got everything from um, the Lions Clubs catering through to white bait, uh, you know, and the high schools that are doing fundraisers with barbecues. So there is this year for the first time gluten free options and nut and, and uh, dairy free options are going to be on air list and recognition that there are people out there that uh, we, you have to cater for everybody these days so yeah. yeah we've got ticked that box this year so oh good on you that's great yeah you've got to cater for everyone of course as you say and speaking of catering for everyone the racing side of things graham is there any important information that the license holders need to know yes our program is out um the it's up online now there are a few changes um uh, we are part of Southern Harness and they have a programming committee down there so just people should be aware that it's not exactly the same as last year so they need to make themselves familiar with that but there is a lot that is familiar. Um, starting the day with an amateur race and I believe every movie, every good movie deserves a sequel <laughs> and I'm hoping that, <laughs> can I say that selfishly, I'm hoping that there's a sequel coming. Of course you can. <laughs> coming January so just all the other amateurs out there need to be aware of that please <laughs> um, good on you look we, we don't just cater for the amateurs we cater for the junior drivers there's a fillies and mares option for maidens there's a three year old race for maidens that is really important to our club and I hope that there are enough nominations to get this Gallagher Gold Cup race staged it was last year the Gallagher family have been part of the race since our very first race meeting. And uh, I understand that you have a three-year-old filly that's very close to qualifying. So I hope that you get the job done and <laughs> can bring it down on your holiday trip to Nathan. And, yep. Yeah. Would be... No pressure, Robbie and Carla. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Uh, Graham, no, uh, thank there's you. Three, <laughs> there's three trots. There's yep. a group three free-for-all pace and there's a free-for-all trot. So mm-hmm. there is... You know, that there is something for everybody and um, e- even to the fact that there's a Jim Carner at Harware on the 28th and a trial meeting at Cromwell on the 30th so bring your whole team down. Um, mm-hmm. Something that we are doing new to this year is this $10,000 maiden stakes as part of Southern Harness but we are as a club topping the other races up that would have stakes shifted to those races so everybody at Omakel will race for you know, pretty much the same money or better than last year. So wow. in this day and age, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy, but that's something that we've committed to doing this year. Um, yeah. And in recognition for the fact that some trainers come from as far as Kaikoura, we are putting up $500. It's not much, but it's $500 for the trainer that can bring the most starters to Omakao. So it's 300 for the most, 200 for the second most. And we hope that they'll use those vouchers at RD Petroleum because they're fantastic sponsors of our, of our club but mm-hmm. just to help you get you here. But look, owner's privileges, are, we do offer pretty good owner's privileges. Um, so anyone starting won't be disappointed by bringing a horse to Omakao. So I, I guess now we just need some good old-fashioned Central Targo summer yep. and the continued support of the many trainers that have, as I say, like they come from Invercargill to Kaikoura. So we've... There's six horses trained at Omakau, so clearly that's not quite enough to run a race meeting, so we're incredibly <laughs> grateful to those that have come in the past and yeah. hope that they continue to support us in the future because it is it is a big day and our community rely on it. Like there's about $25,000 goes into local organisations from line clubs to schools mm. to sports clubs just for parking cars and selling hot dogs and... Um, running our bar and stuff like that so yeah with your support we can do something pretty special and we look forward to having not just your horses but your family and everybody else that's important to you at Central Targa on the 2nd of January.
Wonderful. Well, Graham Cinnamon, thank you so much for your time. Very much looking forward to the meeting and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you and the team. We'll see you in 2020. Thank you very much and look forward to being a service to everybody there on the day. On the 4th of January, we're down to Roxburgh. David Parker uh, kindly joined us here on the Harness Half Hour to have a chat about what you can expect from their meeting this year. Well, of course, the Central Otago circuit is an integral part of the harness racing industry, especially in the the festive season. And joining me from the Roxburgh Trotting Club is David Parker. David, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, gee, that little track really does turn up a good crowd, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. We're um, really quite proud of it. Um, we concentrate on making it a real family day and um, and we get some great racing, yeah. And the track's good this year too. Oh, that's great to hear because um, you have had a little bit of bad luck in terms of weather and things in the past. Yes, um, out, of, out of a bit of bad always comes a bit of good. Yeah. Um, three years ago we just about got rained out. We couldn't use the mobile, so now we've gone ahead and sanded it and um, it's got a great surface now, yeah. Oh, perfect. And, of course, a real community spirit involved with the club as well. Yes, it is. It's like most we rural towns. Um, we haven't got much to um, you know, cater for the locals to make a bit of money off the side. We just have our A&P show and, and the race meeting and um, all the locals get behind it, which is great. Yeah, and there may be people listening to this, David, that might be heading to Central Otago for the holidays and maybe they've never been to the Roxburgh meeting. Why would you encourage them to head along? Why would I encourage them to head along? Well, we put on a lot of... We uh, we spend a lot of time uh, and money with kids' entertainment. The mm. kids, uh, parents can just drop the kids off and go and sit on our embankment and, um, and enjoy it. And our embankment is right close to the action so they can hear everything and see everything and hear all the who's so yeah it goes down well in that respect yeah and it seems like there's a real camaraderie too with the industry and the club you know it's a it's a real social occasion especially after the event you guys like to get together and celebrate yes we do that after and we do it the night before as well we call it, make it welcome for the owners and trainers to come along the night before we have a Calcutta and um, a pig on the spit and make it, yeah, we put on a bit of a shout and um, lead into the next day, yeah. Perfect. And of course, if anyone's thinking of going to the Central Otago circuit with a horse, you'd definitely encourage them to give it a go this year? Yes, I would definitely give it a go this year because, um, it, you know, um, yeah, it is, it, we, we try and accommodate for them and, mm. yeah, it's give it, definitely give it a go. We make it as hospitable as we can, yeah. Yeah, and some great stakes on offer too. I see you've got some $10,000 races there. Yep, yeah, we try and encourage a lot of Canterbury ones to come down and um, that, and um, yeah, there's only way, well, we've got, we got to cater for the owners, so yeah, mm-hmm. no. Perfect. All right, well, I know you're busy, I know you and the team are frantically getting ready for the very busy, silly season, David, but thank you for your time. All the best, I'm sure the weather gods will smile on you and the club this year. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Jess, and the best, and have a Merry Christmas yourself and a Happy New Year. Cheers. On the 6th of January, Wyndham, of course, the meeting to be held at Cromwell Racecourse on the big grass track circuit. Always very popular, a great crowd, especially being so close to Wanaka and Queenstown. And we had a chat with Russell Ferguson. Well, of course, one of the feature meetings around the Central Otago circuit is at Cromwell Racecourse for the Wyndham Harness Racing Club on the grass. Uh, Monday the 6th of Jan, that'll be happening, and joining me is Russell Ferguson. Uh, Russell, thanks for your time. How is preparation going with you and the team? Actually, preparation is very well advanced. Um, we had a venue inspection yesterday. The track and the venue is in splendid order. Um, we have a, a program that will cater the needs for all of the racing people, a lot of whom uh, camp in the area, over the uh, area, and we would expect to find, have full fields um, and a fine day. It'll be great. Oh, exactly. And, of course, it's such a blessing, too, that at that time of year, you're so close to Queenstown and the lakes and Wanaka, you've got uh, an abundance of people coming to the track. Yep, we'd like to think that we can um, put on a, a great day's entertainment for uh, everybody. Um, we're part of the uh, Destination Summer or the Inter-Island Summer Festival, um, which caters well for the for the little ones and, um, and combine that with a, a good day's racing on a great big track where everybody gets a chance. Mm. Um, it'll it'll be good for everybody. Yeah, it's a unique course, isn't it, Russell? Because that straight seems to take forever. Uh, yeah, and sometimes uh, it feels like that too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially if you're near the front end when you're turning for home. Uh, and looking at the stakes too, you'd be very thrilled to be able to maintain a minimum of nine thousand and ten thousand, and also the cup for fifteen grand. Yeah, as part of the Southern Harness Racing philosophy. Um, that's what we do, uh, and yeah, and we're very pleased to be able to, to put on that level of stakes um, and uh, cater for all, all types of horses, yeah. Okay, and if there's anyone listening to this, Russell, they might be from Canterbury or further afield and they haven't bought a horse to the circuit before, what would you say to entice them to bring a horse to Cromwell that day? Um, it's grass track racing at its absolute best um, on a big track, um, you get a combination of um, some standing starts and some mobile starts. Uh, there's horse facilities on site for, and there's camping. There's a camping ground on site that is uh, inundated with people from the uh, racing industry um, camping there over that time of year, and it's just a great atmosphere and a great time had by all. Oh, perfect. So if someone's wanting to find out more, can they contact the club directly there, Russell? Yes, see the contact myself or Julie or Jason at the uh, Southern Harness office and uh, they'll tell them everything they need to know. Yep. Beautiful. Well, keep up the great work. I'm thrilled to hear that everything's going well and let's just cross fingers for another stunning day there on Monday the 6th of Jan. Oh, absolutely. We're looking forward to it. It's a, it's a great part of the world at that time of year and, and you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> exactly. Russell, thank you very much for your time. No problem at all. Thanks, Jess. On the 7th of January at Timaru, Liz Shand uh, is with us. She's going to chat about the Farlap Braceway meeting and especially touches on what that statue outside the race course means to them. Well, in early January, uh, we see South Canterbury taking centre stage with the Timaru Harness Racing Club and joining me from the club is President Liz Shand. Liz, thank you for your time and, gee, you guys have been busy this season and looking forward to your holiday season of racing. Yes, we are, Jess. Thank you. Yes, our first meeting is Tuesday the 7th of January. We've got two January meetings. Uh, Tuesday the 7th of January we start at 2 o'clock and it's uh, good holiday racing. It's a busy time, of course, for uh, owners and trainers after a busy racing season. So it's a good opportunity for horses that are being a bit unlucky or looking for an extra start maybe to, uh, to get in at Timaru and uh, have, a, have a good day there. Okay, so that's Tuesday the 7th and of course you've got Wednesday the 15th of January and I'd imagine of course at this time of year both meetings are are well and truly perfect for a family gathering or taking the picnic out. Yes, yes, we've got activities for children in the Kitty's Castle and the Lucky Numbers and the quiz. Um, Certainly our our track and our grass area is great for people bringing the picnic out and the family and uh, just enjoying the view. It's the atmosphere and it's seeing the horses close up particularly our holiday goers at this time that are all new to to the racing industry. They just like coming out and having a good look and uh, enjoying the occasion. Yeah. And, of course, being prime real estate too on the main highway, people see the track as they go past, and you've got the uh, unique feature, of course, of that stunning Farlap statue. Do you find many people are still stopping in to have a look at that, Liz? All the time, Jess, and uh, people from all walks of life, the young guy on the motorbike, because I see it out my window, Mm. uh, on the motorbike coming in to have a look at the statue, people in the camper vans, uh, you can see the older couple coming in all the time, getting out of the car and taking photos, so it's just wonderful that, um, you know, it's still a very important part in the the history or as an icon in the area. Yeah, perfect. And if people are listening and maybe they're um, in the South Canterbury region or even North also Targo and Mid Canterbury and they're wanting to bring friends along and give them an experience of harness racing. I guess that's a great draw card to be able to say, hey look, it's the, the birthplace of this great horse. Yes, yes. We certainly encourage people um, and point to them exactly where the statue the statue is so they can go down and have mm. a look. And it's around the side, it's got all about the history of his races and his record and things. So it's not just the statue, it's a bit of about his story. And more importantly, the horse is facing towards Sea Down where he was actually born. So, mm. yeah, that's pretty special. Oh, it's awesome. And Liz, for those meetings, are there any gate charges or, or what's the cost to get in on those uh, two meetings, the 7th of January and 15th of January? January. No, the entry's all free both days. Uh, it's all about looking after our owners and trainers and our, and our punters. Um, so no, uh, certainly all free and things. The second day starts at one o'clock, whereas the first day's more a twilight meeting. Mm-hmm. Second, 
Second day, the Wednesday, the 15th, is usually a lot of good quality fields in past years. Um, Timaru's sort of one of the few meetings, and there's the Nelson Marlborough circuit where a lot of other trainers are heading. So the local horses in that Canterbury area are looking for, for, for races, and we find we've had a good quality day, good day for astute punting. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Liz, I know that you're a busy lady, you and the team, of course, getting ready for the the crazy, silly season. But thank you so much for your time. And thank you again for everything you and the club do for females in the sport, particularly with that Mother's Day meeting. Uh, Keep up the amazing work. Oh, no, thank you, Jess. Thank you for your support, too, with uh, all your recognition of the clubs and things as well. We say um, uh, thank you to all our owners and trainers and sponsors throughout the year, and we wish them a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. On the 9th of January, North and South in one of the uh, popular clubs with owners, uh, Paul Hales has a chat to us around their race meeting and what's happening on course. Well, of course, one of the clubs that is well and truly renowned for the way they look after their patrons and owners is the Northern Southland Club, and they're holding their holiday meeting on the 9th of January. Joining me from the club is Paul Howes. Paul, thank you very much for your time, and I know it seems like it's a fair way away, but the 9th of Jan will come round pretty quick. Yeah, no, it'll sneak up pretty quick. We actually had a committee meeting last night to get things in order for uh, 9th of January meetings. So, yeah, we realise that Christmas and New Year and that, and, uh, yeah, it'll be upon us before we know it. Yeah, it sure will. And, of course, being a twilight meeting, it's a great excuse for the locals to get out and enjoy the night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were uh, actually quite surprised with the crowd we got for this meeting last year. Um, there hasn't, there won't be much racing on in Southland over that period. It'll be more in Central Otago. So mm. I think the people that don't go away are actually looking for a day out by then. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always a tricky time uh, once you're through New Year and through Christmas. You start running out of things to do with the family, don't you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of um, what's happening on the day in the racing card, what can you tell us about the meeting? Uh, so the racing side of it, mm-hmm. um, we've got a few wee nice races, feature races there. We've got the Laker House of Travel Summer Cup. Um, we've got the Southern Bell Speed Series race or heat for the, the mares. Um, we've got a nice trot there, the Elite Racing Gordon Southern Memorial Trot. So, yeah, there's... Uh, oh, and uh, I just about forgot a um, Nugget final oh. for $15,000 as well. So, yeah, there's some nice wee races on that card. Oh, definitely. And, of course, those Nugget finals, they've been great incentives recently, haven't they? Yeah, and I imagine there'll be some nice horses racing over the... Christmas period that'll uh, become eligible for that final so mm. I expect quite a tidy wee field for that race. Cool and in terms of on course entertainment or action there's always you know somewhere to grab a feed or have a picnic on course? Yeah exactly yeah and we've got the if you're an owner on the day you get to enjoy the hospitality in the Alabar owner's room and you also might get uh, one a trip to Auckland, you go on the draw, all the owners will go on the draw for that trip to be drawn at our last meeting. Um, also for, uh, un, for, well, it's a lucky losing ticket, but obviously your ticket won't be a winner, but um, there's flights for uh, to Stewart Island there, so there's two flights to be given away to the um, losing ticket draw winners. Um, also, we're going to, this year, uh, do a bit of entertainment for the kids. We're going to get a, a bungee trap, uh, tramp actually, they call it, bungee tramp. So it's sort of like the um, reverse bungee, I suppose, if kids bounce up and down, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that'll be along for the kids to enjoy. Oh, great. Um, so uh, for the adults, top of the park, so you get to go to the top of the park for a $40 package of uh, food and beverage. Mm. So, yeah, there's plenty happening for everyone. Oh, wonderful. Well, it sounds like it's going to be enough to keep you guys busy and out of trouble over Christmas. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We've sort of got things in place. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully we get to get to Omakau or Roxburgh or somewhere like that before our meeting. Yep.
Perfect. Oh, well, Paul, thank you so much for your time. Very much looking forward to that meeting, and good luck to you and the crew for the 9th of Jan. Oh, thanks very much for that, Jess. Yeah, if you're in the Invercargill area or you didn't manage to get up to Central Targo over the Christmas uh, New Year circuit, yeah, it's definitely a good race meeting to come along to. So, yeah, look forward to the day. Perfect. Thanks so much, Paul. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, same to you too, Jess. Hi, Razor here from Canterbury Rugby. When you need airport parking, choose a team that's on the ball. Meet at Airpark Canterbury and get their free Mercedes shuttle to drop you right off at the terminal. Airpark Canterbury have the cheapest 24-7 airport parking and you'll never get left on the sidelines. Give Airpark Canterbury a try. Airparkcanterbury.co.nz There's always a park for me At Airpark Canterbury On the 17th of January, we see the start of the Blenheim circuit on the grass there up at Waterlee, and we caught up with Shirley Morrison. We're heading up to beautiful Blenheim in Marlborough for this interview, of course, catching up with Shirley Morrison from the Marlborough Harness Racing Club. Shirley, thank you for your time, and understand a very special milestone coming up for you in the meeting this year. Yes, this year is our 100 years of racing at Waterlee, both harness and galloping, so we're looking forward to having a celebration for that event oh fantastic and i would imagine even though it's happening 17th 19th of january very much on your mind because it will come around quickly yes it certainly is we're doing quite a lot of preparation and we're planning a memorial pages for the sunday race book displays and things like that to show the centenary as well as all the normal things that we plan for racing Nice. Okay, so grass track racing, a massive bonus too because it brings the action closer to the crowd? Yes, that's true. It's on the grass out the front, so it'll be very good. Okay, and what kind of feedback have you had? Are people quite pleased that they've got the grass track option now? Yes, I believe so. It seems very popular. And also this year we're sort of... uh hoping to get a few more trotters because there's a lot of trotters around so yeah. uh, it'll be good yeah definitely okay so the big meeting well the cup itself is on the sunday and you're going to have summer festival there so all of the usual options that go with that franchise in terms of hospitality yes that's right yes there's uh, t- things for the kids to do at live music and uh yes uh, all the inter-race uh, events that are normally held with the summer festival Perfect. Okay, and if anyone's wanting to uh, give the club a call, maybe they're wanting to find somewhere to house their horses and also themselves, are you guys open to people giving you a call just to find out where to go? Yes, they'd be fine. And also they can send an email to the Waterley Racecourse Secretary and she can give you advice as well. Fantastic. Well, Shirley, thank you so much for your time. As I know, um, it, it's very busy time for you and everyone on the committee. I wish you all the very best celebrating 100 years. It's a very special milestone. Yes, thank you very much. We look forward to it and anybody that wants to come. Well, that is it for the Harness Half Hour. Thanks to Air Park Canterbury and HRNZ Marketing. Thanks to all of the clubs that have joined us on the podcast to chat about their meetings coming up. I wish them all a very successful day at their respective tracks. And of course, to you, thank you so much for listening. I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas, a happy new year, and all the best good punting to you all. <laughs>